Chargers offense right now. A little love hate pass catchers edition here. The good news is, while it's not going for Quentin Johnson in the offense, it is for Keenan Allen, and Keenan Allen has the Bears on tap, Jay, which is pretty much a theme of this show is if somebody's playing the Bears and they're a pass catcher, fire them up. Yeah, and Keenan Allen has had a monster year already, but the thing with Keenan Allen is that the past two games, Justin Herbert has literally left like 200 receiving yards and two touchdowns on the oh, table yeah. for Keenan Allen, just with throws that are Justin Herbert's fault. He's just missed him, missed him in the end zone a couple of times, left basically a 70-yard touchdown on the on the field against the Cowboys as well. So there is more to come from Keenan Allen. Yes, he had a disappointing game against the Chiefs. Chiefs quietly have a top five defense in the NFL. They're a monster to play against. And now all of a sudden he gets a very favorable matchup. I mean, that's the thing, it, right? It's not just us. Each of the last two weeks, there's been a, in essence, a walk-in touchdown mm. that Justin Herbert has just missed with Keenan Allen, despite all the production. Like he actually could have had, he's got a 30% target share yeah. this season as well. And the Bears bottom five in terms of touchdowns allowed to wide receiver. Obviously, Keenan Allen has at least one end zone target in four of the last five. So, yeah, he's my wide receiver six this week. He should be great and somebody to watch and enjoy on Peacock and NBC Sunday night. I'm a company man. Good guy. And then you, and then you turn guy. on yes. uh, and after that, and then you turn on Chucky. <laughs> right. Look, I don't know if it's a good game or not, but here's what I do know about the Bears and Chargers. That'll be on Sunday night on NBC and Peacock. You can bet that game. Yes, you, can. you can play fantasy around that game, time. and you can bet that game. So it honestly doesn't matter whether it's a good game or not because it's going to be interesting to you. Well, we stay hyping up the game because DJ Moore is hey, next on the Hey, be sure to cut that as list. a promo for NBC, <laughs> yeah, uh, Stephen. Do me a yeah. favor. Cut that. Send Save that over to NBC. I bet you they'll, uh, they'll want to play that quite a bit. DJ Moore, he's got the Chargers obviously staying in this game, and it's quite simple. Most fantasy points allowed to wide receivers this season, and DJ Moore – uh, should get a lot of those easy targets, Barry, from Tyson Bajent. He should one. get all the targets, right. the easy ones, the hard no, ones, the medium Deontay ones. Deontay Foreman there, too. <laughs> I, I'm honestly, Tyson Bajent has a 36.5% target share from Tyson Bajent so far this season. And you mentioned it. Chargers have not only allowed the most fantasy points to wide receivers, they've given up at least 75 yards to an individual wide receiver in every game this year. So if you're telling me one wide receiver from the Bears is getting at least 75 yards in this game, feel pretty good that it's going to be DJ Moore. He's yep. a top 12 play for me this week. And I think watching Ohio State games every week, it's a reminder that you don't need a great quarterback to provide value for a wide receiver one. Uh, and so I think DJ Moore, there's a lot of pitch and catch. He'll get a lot of screen passes. He'll be fine this week. Jay, how about Terry McLaurin? Comes in as wide receiver. Do, do you like how both Tyson Bajant and Ohio State catching strays there? So we're trying to talk up <laughs> DJ Moore. It was. Jay Croucher just yeah, all just, of a sudden. Just Carl McCord catching strays. I'm Not just, Marvin Harrison, no one else on that team. Just I'm, Carl I'm, McCord. <laughs> But, and Tyson Bajant, you're like, you don't need yeah, a great quarterback. Sure. Like, what, he's 1-0. You're saying Tyson Bajant's a great quarterback? I'm saying he's 1-0. Okay, we can go bet the Bears plus oh, the 8 The quarterback half. wins, are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah you got to yeah. give it to him. He's 1-0. He's 1-0. Well, he's one and oh. Sorry, T-Bag. I mean, whatever. You, uh, you know, you, you, dra you, you drafted Michael Thomas. I'm a Michael Thomas, and, and Najee Harris, Harris There's exactly. no more, no more so, people I mean, allowed on this boat. I think if I was Tyson Bajant, I'd be like, wait. Wait, Jay's player evaluation doesn't think I'm good? I think good. His, his average depth of target against the Raiders was two yards. <laughs> took what the defense zero. gave I him. thought it was an, an error on the screen. No, it's two yards. It's not great. We'll no, see. It's, it's, That's hard to do. He got the great. W. Yeah. That is hard to do. All right, moving over to Terry McLaurin against the Eagles. He comes in as wide receiver 16. Jay and you know what uh, McLaurin There's in this matchup. There's a joke in there somewhere. I'm just trying to think between T-bag and average depth of target. I'm just I'm working. I'm yeah, keep it going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about Terry McLaurin and you can work out the joke. Uh, it all works out for everybody. You, guys you can jump in anything. on George Kittle the next one. I'll give you some fun. One hundred percent. And right. Jay, the serve at the Eagles secondary right now, and they've dealt with injury, but they're a little vulnerable at the moment. They are, and we'll see what Kevin Byard joining that team sure. does. Whether that fixes the secondary. Now, to be fair to the Eagles, they were pretty good against the Miami uh, explosive passing offense. But yes, it's kind of flipped from last season where now this is a team you cannot run on but you can throw on them uh so the Avante Maddox going down for the season has hurt them so I think Terry McLaurin uh who should be trending in the right direction in a game that they are expected to throw a lot with game script uh he should be a viable locked in starter this week Matthew yeah I completely agree look even though Sam Howell is going to spend half this game on his back the fact is he's been able to find Terry McLaurin he has at least a 25% target share and at least 80 receiving yards in three of the past four games with Howell under center. Eagles have allowed 17 fantasy points to a wide receiver in every game this year. He'll see some Darius Slay, and honestly, more often than not, he's gotten the better of Slay. 85 yards in each of the last three games against Philly, dating back to last season for Terry McLaurin, at least 85. He's averaging 19.9 against the Birds. We expect the Eagles to be up and up big in this one. They should be throwing. Terry McLaurin is my wide receiver, 16 
this week. Scary Terry on Halloween. Come on, boys. Does it get better than that? Uh, well, it doesn't get better for Sam Howell, who's getting sacked 5.7 times per game. Yes, yeah, Which is a record, which is terrifying. Obliterate the record. He's not going to end the season this way. This is no. Jacoby Brissett at some point, unless he figures out how to get the ball out quicker. He needs and to he has the Eagles pass rush. A bit worried about Sam Howell on Halloween weekend. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that. You should, you know what you should do what is should do, um, well, you just watch, you know, a bunch of Chucky on Peacock. Yeah. Yeah, that I'm might be. Stay man. scared. Yeah, yeah, See what I mean? To just like, go. yeah, exactly. Maybe. Oh, and, well, as transition. scary as it is for uh, <laughs> Great as scary as, very yeah. smooth. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was. Yeah. Peacock numbers. I've been soaring. up all night writing love hate <laughs> yeah. with no intro. No intro. That's a crazy time. Time. Listen, Sometimes we don't have our fastball, Matthew. Sometimes we got to get by on off speed. That's right. There you go. Throw curve every now and then. Right, just you, you just spit, hope, sweat, yeah. junk ball. Yeah, just hope exactly. They, hope they chase the slider in the dirt. Exactly. Hope they have a wide, wide strike zone. It's been about the last five years of my career, to yeah. be perfectly honest. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. Oh, man. Our Good next much. one here, George Kittle. Mm-hmm. Uh, he comes in as a top five tight end. Listen, for George Kittle's usage in this offense, Matthew, it's just on a totally different planet when Debo Samuel doesn't play. That's the exact thing. There have been five games over the last two years that Debo Samuel has missed. He's got a 24% target share in that game. So whether it's Brock Purdy or Sam Darnold under center for San, San, San Francisco this week, I like Kittle as a top four fantasy tight end this week. Bengals allow the fourth most fantasy points to opposing tight ends. They're tied for the second most touchdowns allowed to the position as well. And again, in the games in which Debo Samuel has missed over the last two years, George Kittle is averaging 18.7 fantasy points per game. Yeah, and you suspect with Sam Darnold, if it is Darnold in this offense, that the guy you're most comfortable going to is the shorter stuff with Kittle. Uh, certainly when Brock Purdy took over as the starter in the last season, Kittle was the guy that he really locked onto from the start. Wouldn't be surprised if it's the same deal with Sam Darnold. Some others receiving votes. Christian Kirk, Chris Godwin, Josh Downs, who we really like on this show. Kendrick Bourne, and for Thursday Night Football, Dalton Kincaid. Jay, who jumps out to you on this list? I think Dalton Kincaid is an interesting one. I was surprised on DraftKings. His uh, receiving prop is only 38 and a half. I think he goes over that. We'll get to our other best bets in that game. Josh Downs continues to be underrated. I don't think a lot of people watch Colts games is the issue, but he is putting up monstrous stats. Uh, And then Kendrick Bourne as well. Uh, He's a wide receiver one on an offense that might be not fixed, but certainly going up against Miami's vulnerable pass defense. I think Kendrick Bourne will be a viable flex option as well. Kendrick Bourne has a 30% target share over the last two weeks. Yeah. 30%. I I mean, you know, back-to-back games with at least 15 or more fantasy points as well. We expect them to be down and having to throw against the Dolphins. You mentioned Dalton Kincaid, 20% target share in two of the last three weeks. Again, no Dawson Knox, no Quentin Morris as well. He is the tight end for the Bills tonight against the Buccaneers. You mentioned Josh Downs. Saints allow the fourth most yards to the slot. So in addition to the fact that he's just getting this massive target share with Gardner Minshew, it's actually a really nice matchup for him against New Orleans as well. A couple of the guys that are on that list, Chris Godwin, who again plays tonight. Multiple red zone targets in four of the past five. Buffalo actually allows the second highest catch rate to the slot. It's a very narrow target tree in uh, Tampa Bay. It's really, it's Evans, it's Godwin, it's Rashi. Uh, uh, Rash, uh, <laughs> Rashid Rice? Rashad, Rashad, I keep wanting to say Rashid Rice uh, he's a, because he's on my sheet, sheet here, but uh, Rashad, Rashad White, White uh, out of the backfield as well. All right, two other names we mentioned there. Speaking of Rashid Rice, Denver allows the uh, most touchdowns to wide receivers this season. They're tied for the team league. Rice actually leads the Kansas City Chiefs among wide receivers in red zone targets. Played 59% of snaps last week. Like, again, his role continues to increase on that team as well. We like parts of the Chiefs offense. And finally, Christian Kirk, since week two, he's the 14th best wide receiver in fantasy football. Zay Jones being out has certainly not helped that. But six straight games now with at least 13 and a half fantasy points for Christian Kirk. Steelers allow the third most fantasy points to opposing wide receivers as well. So Christian Kirk is actually my wide receiver 21 this week. Wow, with no buys. With no, no buys. Welcome back, Christian Welcome Kirk. Welcome back, Christian Kirk. Two first names. Always a crowd pleaser. Moving over to the hate list here. It's led by DeAndre Hopkins. He will be catching passes from what we think will be Will Levis, as much as the Titans have been leaking also that Malik Willis might play in this game. The bottom line is here, Jay, it doesn't really matter who's throwing in this Tennessee offense. It doesn't seem too pretty going into this game against the Falcons. No, when we talk about certain wide receivers who have a talent level where they are somewhat quarterback immune, someone like a DJ Moore, I don't think DeAndre Hopkins is at that point of his career at this point. I think we're going to see a lot of Derrick Henry, a lot of Tajay Spears. They're going to be running the ball. 
think back to Malik Willis's starts last season, even if it is Will Levis, uh, against the Texans in particular, Malik Willis can't even remember the time he threw it. it was just hand off to Derrick Henry, hand off to Derrick Henry. Uh, we'll see. Hopkins might catch a few balls if they are down, but certainly not comfortable starts. I mean, he's going he's to get a decent target share, but again, we just don't know what to expect. It's The Falcons are pretty good against perimeter wide receivers. A.J. Terrell obviously has a big part of that as well, but no team in the NFL allows fewer yards to perimeter wide receivers, which is obviously where Hopkins spends the majority of his time. Uh, then the Atlanta Falcons as well. Over under is 36. Like this is going to be an ugly game. This is a this is a young way coup game. You know yep. what I mean? Like this is just a. Uh, it's a time to load up Chucky on Peacock. I'm just exactly. Is this is not a this is not an attractive game. You know another one. We talked about this the other day on keep it open, close it out, and we close it out on Tyler Lockett. So no surprise that he winds up on the hate list as well, guys. Single digit fantasy points in three of the past four games. No team in the NFL allows fewer fantasy points per game to opposing wide receivers than the Cleveland Browns. And in fact, prior to last week, which is sort of this weird fluky game and Pittman had the one big play, prior to last week, Cleveland allowed only two wide receivers or two wide receivers to reach even 60 yards. So I have locked it at 36 this week, guys, especially because we expect DK Metcalf back and JSN is starting to emerge. Yep, and even after giving up 38 points to Gardner Minshew and the Colts, Cleveland still statistically have clearly the best defense in the NFL. To your point, just random plays in that game. Like Gardner Minshew's running for touchdowns, Pittman turns a 12-yard catch into a 70-yard touchdown. Uh, I think that the Cleveland Browns defense will be right. I think they will too, and I think when you look at Lockett right now, there's just no sign of the big play from him, which we're so accustomed to seeing over the years. So yeah. you have to wonder, I'm not saying it's the getting, you know, he's declining, but he definitely doesn't look like the Tyler Lockett of the last five years. Do you think so JSN far. can outproduce him the rest of the way? Easily. Yeah. I mean, he drafted JSN in the first round. He was a guy that two years ago had 1,600 yards in college football catching passes from CJ Stroud. I mean, it just seems like um, he was drafted to get a lot of volume and he needed the first half of the season to get ready. I wouldn't be shocked if the Seahawks win that division with the Niners kind no. of stumbling a little bit with JSN trending up. Devin Witherspoon right now is. I the, would be. I would still be shocked. Well, I don't know. The, I, 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 I'm not, I don't think it's out of the realm of question. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I wouldn't. I think the thing is, is that it was out of the realm of question a week ago, yeah, and now true. all of a sudden. Now, it's now a they're possibility. In the, they're in the plus 400 type of range. Yeah, yeah. It's because of their defense. Their defense yep. is much better than people realize because of yeah. the young talent. Yep. yep. Devin Witherspoon right now is the number one graded cornerback by PFF not in rookies. the entire NFL. Right. In the entire He's NFL. Terrific. He is an absolute monster. He All right, is. he's our, really good. Our next one here, a guy that's constantly mentioned with trade rumors, that is Jerry Judy, who has that uh, impressive Chiefs defense, of course. Judy comes in for you, Matthew, as wide receiver 45, not producing, and not getting much volume either. No, no. I mean, listen, it, I mean, obviously, if you're in a league where you get fantasy points for arguing with Steve Smith, Jerry Judy's a <laughs> first round pick. But in a normal with fantasy a, league, first overall pick. Right, he's, yeah, obviously. Not, yeah. Exactly. Christian much, McCaffrey over there. Yeah, he really is. But you, you mentioned that Chiefs defense, Connor. Right, they're top 10 in terms of fewest fantasy points and yards allowed to opposing wide receivers as well. So Judy, who has five or fewer targets in four or six games a season, zero ends on targets, didn't do anything the last time they faced the Chiefs a couple weeks ago when he did get into that argument with Steve Smith. I, he's wide receiver 45 for me. Yeah. And the issue is last time Russell Wilson played the Chiefs, which was two weeks ago, yes. Russell Wilson had 96 passing yards. Correct. This is an awesome defense in Kansas City, and that's been the quiet building story of the season in a way, and now their offense looks right as well, so they're the best team in football. Our last one on the pass catchers is Kyle Pitts. It feels like, guys, every time we say this is the breakout <laughs> for Kyle Pitts, we really? come back to reality. The t point total in the game for the Falcons and Titans is only at 36, as we've mentioned before. Kyle Pitts is not stacking together good weeks. It's just a blip on the radar here and a blip on the radar there. There's just no consistency. And we talked about this with Danny Carter last week, that even though Pitts was having these games where it looked like on the surface his stats were improving, he's just not running the same amount of routes mm. as he was earlier in the season. And it just doesn't seem like, even though Desmond Ritter is putting up stats, even if they are empty stats, there's still just not enough to go around when Arthur Smith is so intent uh, on the Jono Smith life, Matthew. It's un... I, so... It's been better for Pitts recently. I mean, it's definitely been better for Pitts, but that's damning with faint praise. He's got one game this year with over 50 receiving yards. Desmond Ritter, throughout his career, and especially this year, plays a lot better at home than he does on the road. This game's in Tennessee. Titans have had two weeks to prepare for the Desmond Ritter experience. It's, they're pretty good defensively against tight ends. They allow the seventh fewest fantasy points per game to opposing tight ends. So, yeah, Kyle Pitts is only tight end 14 for me this week. 
Has Arthur Smith gone past Mike McCarthy in your coach dislike rankings? Yeah, because you know what? And I was going to do this tomorrow. I was going to do this tomorrow. Maybe we can wait for tomorrow. But did you guys see the no, quote on I Twitter am. about yeah. like it's just like ah, you know, I'm making fantasy <laughs> managers. He hates fantasy football. He hates <laughs> fantasy football. Which, by the way, that's fine. You're allowed to hate fantasy football, Arthur Smith. I got no issue with you hating fantasy football. I have no issue with you hating fantasy people that reach out on Twitter that complain about you on Twitter. And I'm one of them, by the way. I got no problem if you hate me. That's fine. And you should try to get the Falcons to win football games and not care about our fantasy needs. But, and Adam Levitan, my friend Adam Levitan, made this point on, on Twitter, which I think he spoke it so perfectly, which is just like, forget that. Forget fantasy football for a second, right? And I'm not sitting here saying I know more about football than Arthur Smith, right? He's probably forgotten more about football than I'll ever know. But I don't think I'm way off base by saying, and this is, again, this is Adam's point as well. I don't think I'm way off base to say, like, the way you win football games is by using your best players. And I think objectively, Bijan Robinson is one of his best players. Tyler Gio's a nice story. He's a fifth-round pick. He got 1,000 yards out of a fifth-round pick. That's fine. John F. Smith, fine. But again, People that aren't fantasy managers have said Kyle Pitts is a generational talent at tight end. Bijan Robinson was the consensus no-brainer. Even though running backs are devalued, this is still a guy that's worthy of a top 10 overall pick in the NFL draft because that's how special Bijan Robinson is. So, yes, you can sit here and say fantasy managers, hey, you know, stop bitching. I'm not worried about you fantasy managers. That's fine. But how about playing the best players on your team? And if you don't think Bijan Robinson and Kyle Pitts are the best players on your team, well, that's a you thing. Like, I mean, you know, like, I, that's the thing. And, and for everyone that says, well, they're winning, yes, they are. They're four and three or whatever they are. That's fine. You know why? Because they have a top 10 defense with Arthur Smith doesn't touch. Yep. Their, their offense sucks. You know what I mean? Like, they're running the ball effectively. I give them credit for that. But, like, they're winning the games because of their defense, which is not Arthur Smith. And, and saying you should use your best players is not – is, is, not not a, is, is, not, is not fantasy football. That's actual NFL football. And the last thing I'll say here is, by the way, I don't think anyone in fantasy or real football had a problem with Bijan Robinson's not right. He's not going to play. The issue is, is that we didn't know about that. And there's too much money involved in the NFL. Sports betting is legalized in gambling and a, a major partner of the National Football League. And the integrity of the game is really important to the NFL. I know this for a fact. I've sat in, in sessions with the National Football League where they talk about this over and over again. And so when you f f say, hey, B. John Robinson isn't feeling right on Saturday night, and then you don't say anything on Sunday morning, that affects, that affects the partners of the NFL who have a significant amount of money involved in this. This, this involves fantasy players and sports bettors as well. Just tell us. Tell us, hey, there's a chance he can't go. Yep. Because, and that's why they're being investigated. Yep. I think the issue for Arthur Smith is last year he did have a leg to stand on because I think they were getting by and performing relatively well with their talent. This year they've got the 25th ranked offense by EPA. Like, it's not a good offense. You're not that's having right. anything to stand on. So maybe do something different. Maybe use your best players, Arthur. Yeah, anyway, it's frustrating. Yeah, I totally get it. We're with you. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and RotorWorld.com. And I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched. Or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now, okay, I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own fantasy football happy hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.